Microsoft Loop is continuing to change the way that we work, and it's also bringing new features every single month that we can utilize. And well, the great news is today, I'm gonna to be showing you seven features you can use today in Loop to improve how you work with Microsoft Loop and also impress your colleagues with. Whether that's going to be getting an automated status report across your Loop workspace, improvements in how we share content inside of Loop with your team, and also new capabilities on how we can improve how we're gonna work with Loop tables. There's a whole range of different areas, and I'm even gonna be covering the important topic of how to restore a change to one of your Loop pages if you accidentally delete some of the content, because I know that some of you have struggled with that. So if you're ready to dive into Microsoft Loop and improve your knowledge, well, let's go. But before we do, hit that like button to let me know that this content has helped you. It always helps by knowing I'm helping you because of course, that's why I'm here for. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Find more great content like this and come on a journey with me to use the tools that you already have in much better ways. Anyway, let's get looped in and check out these new changes. So here we are inside a Microsoft Loop. I'm in a workspace named Project Green Space. You'll know it well if you've seen some of our earlier videos. And what I need to do is keep on top of all of those changes going on in our workspace. Because as you know, as you create content in Loop and more pages, it's very hard to know what's changed and when, including tasks that have also occur across your workspace in different task boards. But now there's a good way you can actually keep on top of all of that. All we need to do is go ahead and select status under your workspace name to be taken to a live feed of the overall status of your workspace. That includes task summaries and also recaps and more. And in here, we can now see that we've got some tasks that have also been completed and overdue. Yes, in our workspace insights, we can also see quick links to get back to our task list on the relevant loop content. As well, we can see recaps that have occurred on relevant loop pages. This makes it really easy to keep on top of all of the tasks across all of that loop content, pages and loop components, which have been added into your loop workspace. There's even the ability to break out your tasks into details. And here we can left click on any of these to be taken straight to that task on the relevant loop page. And recaps are also summarized here. We have a page that Alex has added a recap into. If you haven't used recaps before, they're pretty powerful. In fact, let's go ahead and click on project updates and see the recap on the right hand side that was added. Here it's just mentioning that we added the project update for May 2024. But we can obviously go back, left click and click on create new recap and add a new recap here. Once we do that, that will once again be summarized in our project workspace status. So we understand what pages have changed with quick links to get back into them. So your status page gives you up-to-date information on live changes going in your workspace that you don't then need to check all of the pages and content to keep on top of. And there's now ways to get back to your loop content quickly. Here inside of Teams chat, I've got some promo copy that I'd like to share with Megan that she's gonna review and refine. I've simply added all of my text into a loop component in Teams using a paragraph component. Let's go ahead and click on send to share that inside of the chat with Megan. And once we've done that, well, of course, you may need to get back to it later. And that can be a little bit tricky when the conversation moves on, or maybe a month later, you need to go and find that loop component. Well, now inside of loop, we've got the ability to check into a recent tab and find out all of our relevant content. Let's head back into loop and then go to the recent tab in the top left. And there we go, Project Green Space promo letter copy is available. We can left click into it and take it straight back to that content. Even better, we're gonna to want to organize this into our Project Green Space workspace. So what I need to do is click on Add to Workspace, select Green Space, and we'll now add that page into our workspace. And as simple as that, we've now organized this loop component from our recent tabs by easily identifying it and add it into our workspace so we can organize it in a single place. And not forgetting that we now have the availability of Loop inside of OneNote. Yes, it's currently limited to just the web version of OneNote, but what it now means is we can take our Loop component that we've created in Teams 
We can also now have a copy inside of my OneNote where I like to keep everything together for my own personal use. Let's go ahead and head back into Microsoft Teams. And here I'll go and copy the component straight from our Microsoft Teams chat. Let's now head back into our OneNote notebook using OneNote on the web. All we then need to do is paste in that content. And now we'll have our loop component directly embedded into our OneNote page that we can get back to quickly. And using the power of loop, of course, we can go straight in, make adjustments, and of course, they'll sync in place to wherever that content has been synchronized to, whether that's in a Teams chat or even one of your loop workspaces. We can easily see this by opening up our Teams chat. We'll see here that text has been now been marked in bold. Also, let's check out our Loot workspace. And there we go. It's also showing the same change. So now you can use OneNote to bring in your Loot content and also create it in place to share it with others using OneNote on the web. So before we get looped out, I'd love to tell you a little bit more about what we do at Your365 Coach because we're here for you. Yes, we have a whole range of tutorials on our social channels, but if you need help with Microsoft 365, be it coaching, consulting, or on-demand masterclasses and training, we've got you covered. You can head to the link below to find out more and how we can help your business, team, or yourself with Microsoft 365. And not only that, if you want to find out some cool ways to work in Microsoft 365, you can also grab a free Microsoft 365 ebook that we've created from the same website. Now, let's get back into Microsoft Loop and check out some of those new capabilities. And now there's an easy way to share Loop workspaces with others, because all we now need to do to share access to workspaces is we can create a shareable link that one of your colleagues can then click and they can request access to. Let's give it a try. Here in our Project Green Space workspace, let's go across to the right hand side and click on the share icon and this time select workspace. Now in here, we can now provide access to others inside of our organization, but you'll now see a new ability. We can now generate a workspace link. Let's go ahead and click on copy link and we'll generate a link for our workspace. And as you can see here, it lets new users request access to this workspace and the workspace name will also be visible when they follow this link. But I now need to share this workspace with Megan. Let's go ahead and share this with Megan. And when Megan follows that link, she'll be notified that a request has been sent to the workspace owner to provide access. And of course, that makes the whole process easier, meaning when someone follows a link that shouldn't have access, you still remain in control. With that request sent, let's have a look how it looks to me as a workspace owner. And now in the same dialogue inside of our workspace, I can now see that Megan's request has came through. I can accept or decline this request. Let's go ahead and accept it. And Megan will now be granted access to our loop workspace by selecting that link and following it. And of course, they can be shared with your wider team to provide quick access and also mean that you don't have to go and populate it or yourself when it comes to adding all of your important team members. And if you've used loop tables before, you may have noticed that the dates can sometimes be very restrictive. They're only ever displayed in one single way, but not anymore. Here we have some dates inside of a loop table, but this can also get changed inside of a loop task list as well. All we then need to do is go and click into the drop down under one of your columns where you use a date. We can then go to date settings in the selection. And we can now have some options that we can also change. We can actually set it so it shows the year. That's very handy if you're working across years. But as we know, sometimes we're not machines. We want to understand how many days until a particular date has arrived. So instead, we can once again go back into date settings and we can now select it to show days left. We can now show on these tasks here for our invoices that we've got 28 days, 20 and one month left. It's much easier for us to understand than following a simple date. We can also show the day of the week because again, if we see that as a Saturday, we may not be working and I may want to adjust that date to the Friday prior. So with these changes, you can set them through the date settings on any of your loop tables. And remember what I mentioned, that task lists also have this capability? Well, here we go. Inside of our loop task list, we can also see the same date settings. So you can now choose how your dates display 
in the relevant loop content. But what about table information? Something that you may have found in loop is when you're looking at it through this table view, it can be quite hard when you want to add lots of data and keep up to date with relevant information. While inside of our loop tables, if we hover over any of your columns, you'll now see an icon to pop out this information. By left clicking, it'll pop out this information available to you. You can also now see any relevant information and also select add field to add further fields into your actual loop table. Yes, I could add another date or a person as an example that would need to go and also approve our invoice. All I would need to do is left click into the column seven and update the column name. With that done, we can left click and select one of my colleagues who's gonna be approving this. With that now done, we can also add further comments at the bottom to confirm that we've also had it approved by Megan. And with that done, if we now close down this pop out menu and scroll to the right, you'll now see that a new column exists with Megan's name. So you can actually expand any of your loop table rows and columns to add further detail where they're not working so well in the single view in the table. And a feature that isn't so new is version control, but many of you have already asked, how can you version a page in loop? because unfortunately mistakes can happen. In fact, let's do one of these common mistakes here. Let's go ahead in this loop page. I'm gonna go ahead and delete some content. Maybe I'm gonna cut it out to put it into an email. When I've cut it out, of course the loop page has now saved that change. If I close out my loop page and I forget to bring that content back, well, I've lost all of that content. But not to worry, inside of our loop pages, we can go to the free dot menu and select version history. On the right hand side, we now see a history of all of those changes, including the version I've just modified a few seconds ago. But let's go back and also revert my change. By left clicking on my earlier version and selecting restore, we can now go ahead and confirm the change. And with that done, we now see all of our actual content I cut has been replaced back from that existing version. So are you looped out yet? Hopefully not. But you've just seen a whole range of different capabilities that you can use in the way that you work with Loop. Yes, some of them may not meet your requirements, but some of them may well do. But equally, Loop is continuing to evolve every single month. And with these changes come great new ways to work. Now, if you've liked this video, I'd love it to hit that like button to let me know that it's helped you in your day. Those likes mean that we can create more great content like this because I know it helps you. And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because it helps our channel continue to grow and also will transform the way that you work with tools that you already have in Microsoft 365 because Loop, well, it's just one of many. And otherwise, well, as you know, I'll see you in the next one.